The Separatist droid army was the largest of its kind, making up the vast majority of the ground forces of the Confederacy of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars. But despite its grand size and power, such a massive army was reduced into nothing after Vader gave out a signal from the Separatist High Command Center, which ordered a complete shutdown of all battle droids. While this signal ended the Separatists' ability to wage war on a galactic scale, it didn't end some remnants of its movement from continuing the fight many years after the war ended, as many former military commanders and government leaders still continued to resist the newly formed Empire. This group was known as the Separatist Holdouts, which ranged from isolated squads of droids that never received the shutdown signal to committed commanders who restarted droid factories in order to rebuild the army itself. First in canon, the droid army shutdown caused panic among the lower command structure of the Separatist military, with many of them fleeing into the western reaches of the galaxy, which was a region that still held strong pro-Separatist sentiments and in which the Republic didn't have a firm foothold in. When the Empire was established, it declared vast military campaigns in the western reaches, justifying its aggressive advancements as a need to fully wipe out the remaining Separatist elements. These early campaigns saw widespread praise from most of the general public, as they viewed the crackdowns as final stepping stones into ensuring peace and stability into the galaxy once more. As the Separatists started to get cornered, some of them began to stage terrorist attacks on pro-imperial worlds. These Separatist terror attacks were like candy to the militarists of the Empire, which used them to justify the vast increase and expansion of the Imperial military and the occupation efforts on many planets. As time went on, however, some portions of the public began to question whether or not the Separatist holdouts were really as great a threat as the Empire made them out to be. Others even wondered if the Empire itself staged some of the terrorist attacks as a means to increase its authority over the affected regions. We know of at least one case where this was somewhat true, where an Imperial testing facility ended up blowing up due to an experiment involving kyber crystals went wrong, which was later blamed on a Separatist anarchist terror group to cover up the research of the crystals. About a decade after the end of the Clone Wars, nearly any real threat of the Separatist holdouts was destroyed by the Empire. The very few leaders that survived went into hiding, with some taking on the life of crime. Some eventually joined the Rebel Alliance once the rebellion became widespread. A few isolated battle droid squads remained, but they were usually wiped out whenever they contacted the outside world. Those that weren't continued their previous orders of maintaining a defensive position on whatever outpost they were until they ran out of power, with a few even forming mini-droid societies over time. Other droids were reactivated and used by either the Empire or the Rebellion for various purposes. In Legends, the existence of the Separatist holdouts was very similar to their canon counterpart, with the main differences being that they lasted longer and seemed to have been at a greater size. Plus, we get much more detailed examples of some of them. After the shutdown of the droid army, many Separatist worlds went on the defensive as they fortified their positions and remained inside their shielded cities and outposts. Many of these worlds were within the western reaches and outer rim regions of the galaxy. Hoping to reclaim these territories under the Imperial banner, the Empire continued and even accelerated the former Republic's mass militarization efforts. The reconquest of the Rim was the biggest campaign of the Empire in its effort to retake the Separatist worlds, as well as destroying bands of pirates and slavers that were allowed to reign free during the unstable times of the Clone Wars. This campaign was met with wide praise from the general public over the course of its two years, as order and peace was brought back to the galaxy. Actually, many of the generals and admirals that led this campaign became galactic heroes to the citizens of the Core Worlds, one notable battle was on the planet Akron, where the Separatist leaders of the world actually protected a Jedi who survived Order 66. After refusing to surrender and give up the Jedi, Akron underwent massive bombardment campaigns from the Empire, which saw the death of thousands of civilians and the destruction of its biggest cities. Despite this, the Separatist leaders and the Jedi survivor were able to escape with the help of Obi-Wan. Another notable Separatist holdout was the Nasorian Cell, known as the New Plimpto Resistance. The natives of the planet continued to fight their invaders, who now were under the Imperial banner. They too were led by a surviving Jedi Master, named Das Janir. Although this resistance group was able to take down an impressive number of Imperial troops, they ultimately lost 
and met severe consequences for their actions, as all the soldiers were executed on the spot regardless of their surrender. Later, the Empire tracked down the families of all the soldiers and forced them into slavery as further punishment for their resistance as an example to the rest of the galaxy. Perhaps the one most people are familiar with is the Kizor Delso holdout on Mustafar, where a surviving Geonosian restarted a droid factory on the planet in an effort to rebuild the droid army and its fleet in an attempt to overthrow the Empire. He was able to amass quite a considerable force, including a full-blown fleet of droid starfighters and even a few old Separatist capital ships. The 501st was sent to wipe him and his forces out, but met resistance far greater than they initially predicted. Despite this, the 501st was able to punch through the naval blockade and land on the main droid platforms, taking control of enough of the sector to implant an orbital strike beacon that signaled the Star Destroyer overhead to bombard the factory into total destruction. This was the last major Separatist holdout that held any real threat toward the Galactic Empire. A few squads of battle droids still remained active in the galaxy here and there, but they tended to pose very little threat. The largest grouping of still active droids were encountered during a skirmish on Geonosis between Imperial and Rebel forces, during which they discovered a core ship that still contained activated battle droids. They were destroyed in the aftermath, however. Once the Rebel Alliance formed, many surviving Separatist holdouts joined the Alliance to restore the Republic, offering the Rebellion their men-in-arms and the few remaining Separatist ships they still had at their disposal. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.